Good morning, it's really good to join with you on Tuesday uh, of our prayer week. Don't forget tonight at 8 p.m. on Teams, we're having an online prayer session, so to, please do come along to that. 10 o'clock every day this week in the prayer room and 9 o'clock for the prayer breakfast on Saturday. This morning's theme is around the fire of the Holy Spirit. On San Sunday, uh, I, I talked about the kind of serious nature of fire and how devastating it can be. Uh, we know this as a church that a few few years ago now, uh, we had a fridge that burnt out, the motor was overheating, and uh, it heated above it uh, just a plastic folder through the, the metal worktop and it melted it and, and set it alight and it was smouldering. It wasn't, there were no flames. It was just really hot. And, um, you know, we were really fortunate that it wasn't a massive fire in any sense. But the smoke went, it was, it was everywhere. The whole building, you could smell it uh, for a few good few days afterwards. And the fire brigade came, they put down the big fans and um, blasted the smoke out um, from the building. But you could still smell it. We were really fortunate. But I'm sure you've seen in, you know, whether it's the fires in America or Australia, uh, bonfire nights, whatever it is, fire is devastating. It's dangerous. The heat, when it, you know, it just repels you, doesn't it, when you get near it. No matter, even if it's a little flame, you put your hand near it, you can feel it as you approach. This morning, though, we're thinking about the fire of the Holy Spirit, which is a very different fire. But first, we're going to jump into uh, Exodus 3 and the story of Moses and the burning bush. I love this story. I, I really think it's just a, an amazing kind of moment where God calls someone, uh, calls someone to follow him in, in an amazing way and sets him up for a ministry and a mystery of, of passion, a mystery of kind of his, his, his role, his purpose. Uh, in life as he moves on here's what the scripture says now Moses was tending the flock of Jethro his father-in-law the priest of Midian and he led the flock to the far side of the wilderness and came to Horab the mountain of God where the angel of the Lord appeared to him in flames of fire from a, within a burning bush Moses saw that though the bush was on fire it did not burn up so Moses thought, I will go over and see this strange sight, why the bush does not burn up. When the Lord saw that he had gone over to look, God called to him within the bush, Moses, Moses. And Moses said, here I am. Do not come any closer, God said. Take off your sandals, for the place where you are standing is holy ground. As I said, I love this story. There's so much going on here. Um, and I just want to mention that this week is like our church standing on that holy ground before God, just ready to receive a call and a word and a vision and a picture and a reassurance from him. So please do think about that. But I don't want to share about that this morning, but I really think it's important that we keep that within our mind. I love how God does something remarkable, something kind of quite out there to get Moses's attention. Moses sees a burning bush, but then realises that, that it's not burning. And as crazy as it seems, nothing compared to the task that Moses does in the future of the plague, you know, leading the Israelites through the plague, the parting of the Red Sea, the cloud that guides the, the Hebrew people, the giving of the commandments twice and God getting them to the promised land. It's, it maybe is no surprise that Moses seems OK with passing on the honour to Joshua to get them to the final de destination. The burning bush is just one moment in a catalogue of moments for Moses where God comes through, where God's calling preserves Moses's uh, commitment to follow that he sees Yahweh as someone that has called him in this moment and whatever happens in the future he knows that God is with him we are 
as the Christians in this church and this town and this country, we are a called people of God. You are called by God. Not to wander around aimlessly, hoping that things will work out, but with a purpose and in God's presence. We are called to a purpose as, as purpose as Christians to make the name and love of Jesus known. Sometimes we can think that only certain people are called, and I'm going to talk about that a little, uh, a little later on in the week. But for today, you need to hear that you are called by God to fulfil the purpose, to make the name and love of Jesus known. Now, we will all do that in different ways. We will all have different skills, different talents and different spiritual gifts to make that call a reality. But we are called. I mentioned in prayers a few weeks ago as I was leading it, that one word in the story of Acts, where we are thinking about the story of Pentecost in Acts 2, one word that really kind of got to me and really made me think about how I lead and how we are as a church, particularly as we come into the prayer week. Here are some of the words, just one verse from Acts 2, verse 4. As the Holy Spirit has come upon them, it says this, all were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other tongues as the Spirit enabled them. What I found really amazing is that little word right at the beginning, all. All of them were filled. When the Holy Spirit came upon the believers, it was for all of them. No exceptions. None of them were missed out. Everyone who was there and wanted to be there and was ready to receive the Holy Spirit, and maybe, we don't know, but those that weren't quite ready, received the Holy Spirit. Now we know that someone like Thomas, who, who was a doubter, was probably in that room. All of them received the Holy Spirit. If you read the book of Acts, that word all, that sense of unity, that God is on the move with a group of people, appears so often, and it really challenged me uh, thinking about how I lead the church, how we as Christians live out our faith and our calling, because we all have to do it, all of us, where all of us experience the coming of the Holy Spirit in our lives, we together are inspired. We receive a calling and a power to fulfil God's purpose. None of us are left out. Now, we need to put ourselves in the right place to receive it. We need to be open and willing to accept it and then act upon it. But God doesn't differentiate between how we feel and is willing and ready to give all of us the Holy Spirit's blessing and the Holy Spirit's power to serve him in our calling, just as Moses did. Yes, Moses is held up as this leader of great faith. But what about Joshua who takes them into the promised land? What about the leaders that follow Moses's example? What about all those that followed Moses? What about those disciples, whether they doubted or not, who received the Holy Spirit and then set about changing their community, changing their world? I love the inclusive nature of the Holy Spirit that we hear about in Pentecost. And so today, I just ask you to be open and ready to receive God's Holy Spirit, to be open to be a part of this church where we are all baptised by God's Holy Spirit, that we are all affirmed in who God is and all willing to follow his call on our lives. We are standing on holy ground right where we are. You don't have to be in the prayer room to receive God's Holy Spirit and to receive God's call. Wherever, we, wherever you are today, may you hear his voice and may you hear his call and respond. May God bless you today.